So now we will be discussing essentially um, 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 purposive communication, local and neighbor communication in multicultural settings, and writing in terms of oral and written language. So, in, so on this topic, you will be learning. Uh, so you already know what is what is globalization, the basics of communication, principle, the the, the communication ethics. So now we will apply global communication in in different a cultural settings or multiple cultural settings and also we'll tap on this topic how do you converse using or how do you use um, the spoken and written languages in, according to register and variety okay so now let's have the discussion proper we open the discussion with the principle of cooperative conversation. So when we say about cooperative conversation, so it is proposed by uh, by Grice, H. Grice. That's what I say in books there. And it says that, well, he states that when we communicate, we assume that we and the people we are talking to will be conversationally cooperative. So we have a mindset that we are having a conversation when we have a conversation it is uh, somehow a give and take a two-way thing give and take process two-way thing okay and in order for the conversation or the communication to a conversation to, to be successful we need to cooperate okay we will cooperate to achieve mutual conversational ends this conversational cooperation even works when we are not being uh, cooperative socially. So, for example, we can we can be arguing with with another ambulance and yet we still cooperate quite a lot conversationally to achieve the argument. So, I would say it's not necessarily that it is a peaceful conversation, but when you argue, it's still conversation. You're trying to give your point and you're trying to give your um. And you're trying to win, and you're trying to win from the argument. That's why it's uh, it's still conversation, and uh, uh, subconsciously you are trying, you are saying that, or subconsciously you are saying to the subconscious mind, you are having a mindset that you that there's an expectation that. You would reply, uh, there would be a reply from the end or the other end of the conversation. Okay, so this conversational cooperation demonstrates itself according to Bryce. In a number of conversational maxims, so when we say maxims, it's not necessarily rules because rules are. are are somehow dictating us that it's not to be broken. But through maxims, uh, somehow it's when when you when you execute it, there's an ex there's a tendency that you may break it. So uh, that's why it's just called maxims. So it's here. As he called them, which we feel that we need to abide by. But so this maxim look at first next uh, first side like rules, but they appear to be broken more often than the grammatical and phonological rules are. For example, we will see uh, later that this, that's why Max, that's why Grice uses the term maxim rather than rules. Expanded, uh, Grice expanded his cooperative uh, principle with four, four following co conversational maxims, right? Quantity, quality, manner, and relevance. So when we say quant quality, in here you don't say, uh, you only say what is he, or you only say what is being asked. No more, no less. Be exact, be precise. Uh, uh, in conversation, you need to consider the um, 
the conciseness of of what you're going to say. Bear in mind that you should have equal talk time. Uh, in order for the conversation to be successful, um, each one should have uh, equal, uh, each one should be equally a listener and a speaker. Otherwise, it's not, it, it will not be called as conversation. It's just like counseling that you're the one who's uh, uh, just talking and talking, the other one is just listening. Uh, if, if it's not counseling, uh, it's just uh, listening. The other, the end of, uh, I mean, um, listening session, something like that. Because it, um, in order for that to be conversation, there's a two way thing. So there's an equal portion of talk time. So you don't need to, if, if you want to say something, say it directly. No need for other, um, what we call in, in Filipino palabo, that we need, that you need, you're going to have a very, 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 um, very, very uh, long introduction. And all you wanted to say was just to ask water. You even tell the story of how you lost water from, or you, you, the history of water, when really what all you wanted to say is just you want to ask water. So be efficient on, on saying what you're, what you want to say. Okay. Next quality: always bear with the truth and not with false, uh, false, uh, false information. Otherwise, it's just like uh, credibility in 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 communicative in, in communication ethics. Uh, if you will lose the quality of the conversation if it's all fabricated with lies. Uh, it's just like trash. You're just talking trash if you everything that you say is lies. Okay. Next manner. Be clear. No ambiguous, um, no ambiguous statement. If um, if you want to say no, say no. If you want to say yes, say yes. Being in the middle somehow breaks this demand. You need to say you don't have a firm decision to whatever you're doing. So be clear. And if you if you have taken or if you have um, if you have uh, laid, laid down a promise or given a promise, you see to it that you uh, fulfill it. Otherwise, you would uh, you would be accused of being lying. So that would break somehow quality of your conversation. Okay, relevance. Always say or answer answer um, the question or if you want to share something, see to it that you're what you're going to say is relevant. If, for example, we're talking about the stars and the moon, and then suddenly you talk about um, uh, the uh, you all, you talk about the birds in, the birds in the sky. So find a way to make it relevant. So the stars and the moon are fine are up 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 uh, up there, and so and so was the birds in the uh, the birds in the sky. You cannot see it. Um, um, you make it. You make it a uh, you try you make it a point that ev that you that everything that you would say would be relatable to what's in the topic. Otherwise, you know, parang ano mo? Parang mystery ding mo. Kung sino sabi ni po ng mga tao, hindi mo yun pinag-usap natin. Ah, hindi ka parang emot ganon. Okay. So next, how to call cross communication. So words and gestures are used in particular regions or countries in uh, to give um, meaning to certain ideas. So words are primarily in communication, but uh, gestures would uh, make a, me a meaningful communication as well. So greetings from local. So 
no Filipino. If you want to say, if you want to say, take care in Filipino. Ingat, kawampangan ni niya. Sa buwano, dapsap at agtiman, iloko aganad ka. Okay? So that's how we say take care in, in different languages. Okay. So now, we have removed four languages with four expressions. So these are the common expressions that language learners uh, are basically knowing the beginning of learning the said language. So hello, goodbye, thank you, and I love you. For French, hello, goodbye, thank you, and I love you is bonjour, bonjour, au revoir, merci, titaime. In Spanish, hello, goodbye, thank you, and I love you is hola, adios, gracias, and te amo. In Korean, hello, goodbye, thank you, and I love you is annyeong, annyeong agasip siyo, kumawo, and sarangi, sarangiyo. In Mandarin, it is, so hello is how, goodbye is Saijan, thank you is Sishini, and I love you is Mwaini. So now we move with, so that is the verbal communication for uh, basic greetings for the, for countries and languages we commonly know. Okay, so this has been, this, this was the birth uh, the, the germ of, of the idea that I uh, that gave birth to your project, the handbook. Okay. Next, body language used in intercultural communication. So there are several body la common body language that uh, may mean positive and negative uh, connotation for certain countries. So let's have this one by one. So handshake, so for Filipinos and Americans, handshake has a positive connotation. It's a gesture that means introducing or setting or sealing a deal, closing a good deal. So it's a positive. Meanwhile, if you're going to have a handshake with women in the Saudi Arabia, it could, it's, um, it's against the rules. Well, uh, since they are Muslims, the culture dictates that. So men can ha can handshake with men, but women cannot. Women cannot. Okay. A O K sign. A O K sign in Americans and in, in Englishmen or English people, it's just giving an approval or agreement, or agreeing to something. Okay. Meanwhile, in Brazil and other Latin American countries and also France and Austria, Austria, it's just like the equivalent of the middle finger, so it's negative. Okay, so thumbs up. Uh, there's no negative connotation, but uh, uh, mentioned, but it says that when you thumbs up, it's also giving the, a gesture of approval for Americans, at, uh, English and Filipinos. Sitting with crossed legs, sitting with crossed legs in North America and European is okay. It's a, there's a positive connotation for that. Like the cuatro. You know. Then for Asians and Middle East, it's quite disrespectful because we observe, we see that proper uh, balanced gesture and straight gesture or posture rather is important. We don't like it when we see people slouching, somehow we see that as disrespectful. Now, eye contact. So when we say eye contact for people, uh, for Filipinos, for Spanish, and for the Arabic countries, we see this. If you if you give good eye contact, it's a positive thing. It's in, meaning you are giving, uh, you are showing a showing of uh, respect, sincerity, and interest. If you do otherwise, if 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 you don't uh, look them straight to the eye, it means otherwise. Okay. Nodding the head. So for Filipinos, nodding the head is a greeting. Shaking the head sideways is no. For Greeks, it's the uh, it's the opposite. When you nod, it's no. If you shake your head, it's yes. Okay. Tugging the earlobes. may motor naririnig namin please mute your microphone 
there's a mute icon below. It's just like it's just like Google Meet. I don't need to mention, but you can see. <laughs> so please. There's still one. Now you can PM him and call him call him. Call the call his attention that his microphone is on. Okay. Last call, otherwise I will be the one to unmute you. Anyway. Not disturbing. What? But one last time, if something extraordinary happens that would disrupt the class, I would mute you. Anyway, next. Togging the earlobes. So when you do this, uh, when 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 so and when a Portuguese sees this, means that you're appreciating their food, especially if you're in a Portuguese restaurant. Appreciating their food, it means good food. Uh, but for Spanish people, if, if you're offering drinks and uh, or if you're buying drinks and, and, and he tags or someone tags their in the lobes, it means that they are not going to pay for that drink. For Italians, it means sexual innuendos or sexual initiation, something like that. Right. Next, pointing using the lips. So this is not only um, used by Filipinos. We all know that when, when we do this, we, we point using the lips instead of the finger. It's just us. No. So also Native Americans, Puerto Ricans, and some Latin American people are using, are using this. This is broad arm, arm as in arm, arm movement. So you widening up your arms. So for Italians and you and the US of A, it's just okay with them to use this gesture. Somehow for Japanese and Europeans, they find this insincere. Uh, because they think that you're being too personal. Okay. I mean parang kepaplastikan ka lang sa kanila insincere or impolite. Next, we have the ABCs of intercultural communications. This prop, uh, it is provided or proposed by Lewis in 2008. So acknowledge by level and clarity. So acknowledge, so difference, difference in communication style should be acknowledged uh, by everyone or every person in a group. Ha, na, has a particular communication style which give him or her or her, yeah, or own I, I uh, own identity, identity, um, communicating, anticipating awareness on differences will uh, increase awareness of unique. So, acknowledging, if you acknowledge, and also just like in globalization, if you acknowledge, I mean, global communicative competence, if you acknowledge the differences that we have somehow you will be aware that each one in the communication uh, in communic in the communication aspect arena is uh, unique so there was there will be there will be further understanding and being using when we communicate by level communication does not avoid uh, does not uphold speaking and listening per se but also the holistic process so the verbal and nonverbal is also important so it's not just stop, it doesn't stop for listening and um, listening and speaking. So when we say verbal, it includes the written and the oral communication because you're using words. For nonverbal, it is more on gestures <clears throat> without using words. Okay. Clarify. If you uh, if you have doubts, you ask uh, on your understanding, you ask questions. There's nothing on ask, asking questions in order to clarify your uh, and clarify your thought of confusion. Okay. So now we move with um, cultural communication barriers. So this is now the cultural communication barriers. So from our previous lesson, this is communication communication barriers per se. This one, cultural, especially multicultural communication barriers. So the first one, language barriers. So language is evidently primary uh, 
the primary barrier of communication in second and foreign language <clears throat> context because of its complexity. So imagine you are in a country that you don't know how to speak their language and either of them or any of any anyone from that country doesn't know how to speak in English. How would you even uh, enjoy live or enjoy visiting that country if you cannot <clears throat> if you cannot uh, freely converse with the people. The communication between people from the same country but different mother tongue and cultural background can find it tricky to convey complex emotion and, co and concept which can lead to misunderstanding. Say for example, there's a, there's a story that about uh, uh, kasambahay and, and, and an amo when the, the boss or the female the female uh, amo said that, that um, to feed the lang uh, to feed the bird i mean to feed pakainin yung ibon and then the uh, the kasambahay said uh, yes i will read uh, i've already seen the langgam in langgam nakita nakita nila yung langgam sa kasa hawla sabi niya Langgam, wala naman kami alagang ang langgam, sabi nga naman nung among babae. Langgam, ma'am, yung nasa haula. So for, because, uh, uh, because the amo is Tagalog and, uh, and the kasambahay is Bisaya, and Bisaya, langgam is Ibon. So somehow, they're having um, uh, miscommunication and misunderstanding because of, of, with regards to just feeding the pet because of the difference in um, the the names of of bird or what you call bird in Visaya and what you call bird in Filipino or in Tagalog. Okay, hostile stereotypes. Stereotypes are generalization and assumption people make about the characteristic of a member of a group based on an image about um, what people in that group are. Sometimes these images are wrong and leads to prejudging or an individual who is thought to possess. So, say for example, um, let's say typical stereotype uh, between men and women. Men are by nature polygamous. That means stereotyping. Not all men are are cheaters. There are there. Are, we should uh, we should not generalize. There are still men who are. Who practice loyalty and faithfulness with their partners. So with with the girls, girls are are took very long in showers. So it's um many legal. So it's a stereotype because some girls can take a bath with just uh, in just a matter of five to ten minutes. Another is black, uh, the color of the skin. So fair, fair white skin complexion is superior than the dark one. So it is, that's also wrong, a stereotyping. So um, it's just like the stereotyping in the way back in Spanish, Spanish times, the, the mestizas are the upper class. If you're somehow brownish, you belong to the lower class. So that's stereotyping. So that you will, you will, you will, you will be promoting discrimination instead of equality for equal chances for everyone. Hindi na hire yung isa kasi nga may team. Well, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. Okay? So we base everything with performance and how unique the personality of the other is. If he's qualified or she's qualified, why not? Okay? Behavior differences. Different um, Difference in behavior between employees and different cultures can cause misunderstanding. Every culture has its norm about uh, what regarded as appropriate behavior. So that's why there is what we call ethics for every uh, for every field. So there is code of ethics for every profession. So do that you can know what to act accordingly to your based on your uh, profession. And sometimes uh, also the culture of the of, of your employee of your workplace. Sometimes they they have this culture na nakagawian na so you need to abide by it or, or, and but if you cannot abide by the culture that they have so somehow it violates your principle in life then you can uh, 
can find another job. Behavioral differences. For example, uh, you work in, you want you were employed in a government agency. And then sempre you are already uh, you're already you're already in uh, the inside. So you will find out some anomalous activities. If you're not into that anomalous activities, then it's your option to go to go in, to go out of that to go out of that workplace or to stay. If you're going to stay, you need to keep your uh, keep your you need to just keep your peace and just do your thing in your job. If you if you wish to if you wish not to abide by that, you can go and find another workplace so that you can avoid behavioral differences. Emotional display. So when you say emotional display, so different cultures have a varying regard on this emotional display to, of emotion in, on one culture and may not be appropriate to the others. For example, some uh, culture displays, uh, consider displaying fear as weakness, frustration and anger is inappropriate in a business setting. So I think um, in our culture, we are seeing as frustration and anger as inappropriate. I think not only in our culture, but also uh, globally. If, you, if, if, you, if you're always angry and you always and you're not temperamental, and you're always shouting, you're always mad uh, with regards to anything that you do in your work, somehow you are considered unprofessional. But keeping your peace and just doing everything, just doing your job according to what is asked, then somehow you are considered professional. Sometimes also, or it's also considered that being, that keeping your, uh, keeping, being temperamental inside the workplace and outside the workplace is uh, also make you professional. You mean to say you're not just, uh, you're not, you're, since titulado kang tao, you will not compromise seeing other people that you are, uh, you're, you're, get, you're, you're getting curious every time because somehow they would see because somehow you would show off an impression of you being controlled by your emotions. And when that happens, somehow they would see you as quite unprofessional. If you control your emotions well, somehow, takapagpigil ka, somehow you are, or you can be considered as professional once. So in other cultures, Display of anger is weakness, but I, I mean fear is weakness. But um, before it's just it, it's like that in us. If you're if you they see that you're fearful, somehow you're weak. But really, if you it, but uh, as the, nowadays, uh, fear doesn't mean really necessarily mean you're weak. In the, in uh, in in a different context, fear can also mean can also mean that you are. Uh, um, that you are pro you, that you are processing, a and you are careful uh, because of that. Say, for example, we are we fear for the spread of the COVID nineteen. So the counter, the positive side of that is we become careful with our health. We follow protocols, not to go out, to to be to be to be. To be sanitized, to sanitize every time there. Okay, so the, these are the cultural barriers, communication barriers. So now we move to uh, enhancing oral communication in a, a multicultural setting. So according to Goofy, he suggested the following helpful situations in which one or both communication may be used in English, a second language. So uh, we, we, how do we communicate verbal or orally on multicultural setting? All right. First, of course, you need to learn foreign phrases. How to speak their language, greeting and survival expression is uh, in this language. Meaning to say, uh, that's so that shows your sincerity. 
and you're very much engaged to talk to them because you know their basic meetings. Use simple English. Use simple vocabulary in short sentences. The simplicity of the language contribute to comprehensivity and uh, appreciation of, of the communication process. Avoid using cultural specific terms. So speak, speak in general, simple English. Don't have to use highfalutin words in order to impress. What your, what your aim here is not to impress, but to be understood. Again, it is associated with the second one. Slow, speak slowly and enunciate clearly. So you don't need to eat your words to sound like, like British. Or you don't need to speak fast to, to, to prove that you're a good English speaker. Rather, you should take, uh, take each word slowly and speak, uh, um, speak appropriately in order to uh, in order to be understood rather than and promote um, comprehension and understanding rather than confusion. Okay. Remember, you are not just talking to people of your own race. You are talking in a multicultural setting. You're not just, uh, there are different cultures around you. Observe I message. And the I message, are, are the eyes are the windows of the soul. The sincerity of the speaker is gauged at their eyes. Okay, be alert of a glare expression or wandering expression, which means the listener is at loss. Meaning to say, so if somehow they have this, if you see in their eyes that they're confused, you need to be considerate enough to repeat what you have said. So encourage listener, uh, encourage accurate feedback. So let your listener respond verbally. Okay, do not rely on short responses or nonverbal responses. You ask them uh, if, they, if, if they get what you mean or if they still need anything. Encourage them to speak conversational. Okay, not just big nodding gestures. You should hear it from them that you should hear, hear it from them that you are, that they agree or disagree on what you say, said. Check frequently for comprehension. So no, it's just related with, uh, with this, asking for feedback. Present your point at time, pause for check, for check of comprehension. So you're able to get this, do you have any questions? So do not proceed to B unless A is, has already been asked. Accept blame. So if the listener wasn't able to get what you mean, so should be understanding and lenient to repeat. And so you all follow them. Sorry, I was not able to express myself very well. So again, I would repeat what I said. So, um, it is the obligation of the speaker to talk with clarity. Listen without interruption. Say, for example, someone asks you a question. So you listen to the question to finish before you answer. Okay. So turn take taking a rule of thumb and then must and must not be taken for taking turns. Turn taking is taking turns. So if you already answered, then you have to follow up question. That's the time you can answer. You can uh, you let them finish. Smile when appropriate. Smile is useful if useful form of communication. However, smile only when appropriate and warranted. Do not smile excessively because other cultures would mean it's insincerity. Okay, next, follow up in writing. So result of, result of conversation or oral negotiation should be confirmed with, with, with follow-up letters. So that's why you are, they are asking for evaluation, feedback, so that uh, you ask them feedback so that you can improve your talking skills. And, and it is but appropriate that translation of this kind of local language on their local language is recommended. Okay, questions so far? Before we proceed? Okay, 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 okay. Clear. So I, I understand that it's clear. 
So now developing right, uh, written communication to multicultural audience. So earlier we have discussed oral communication. How do you communicate orally? Uh, speaking, spoken. Now, how do you communicate uh, written? Again, it was uh, it was given and proposed by Goofy, Goofy, 2008. So he said that. Uh, so he elaborated. He elaborates that written messages can be improved by the following: consider local formats, observe titles and status, using short sentences and paragraph, avoiding uh, ambiguous, ambiguous. Um, expressions, striving for clarity, using correct grammar, citing number carefully, and accommodating leaders in organization, tone, and style. So the following are, are goof, goofy's or guffy's suggestions coupled with earlier with the earlier guidelines that can help you create Mute. Sorry. There. We practice uh, the block, semi block type of writing. So, documents must uh, you should follow or have their standard format or the local format so that they would uh, see that it is, they would recognize that if it's look if it's a formal letter or something that's like um, a casual letter but usually they would recognize that it is a good it is a letter for business or or some a letter that should be taken seriously if it's if, if it follows their format decide whether to use your organization or prefers uh, organization preferred format or adjust to local formats so observe title and status so use last name, titles, and other signals, rank, and status. For instance, in writing the inside address, the inside address is where you find who to write. That is the inside address. Hmm? Who to write? Who to write or who you're writing? Atama, yes, inside address. So the title, the position of the receiver should be explicitly written or detailed written, okay? And for example, observance of title and status, engineer Marco Philip S. Mercado. Also, his address is correct, engineer, a district engineer, his position, Tarlac first. Nawawala. Tool to the people, to the person you are writing to, okay? The use of short and uh, short sentences and paragraphs. It's just like speaking on simple sentences. You do it that your sentences on the written form are understandable. You do not aim to impress these people or the, the reader of the, of the letter, but they're okay. Somehow you need to impress, but it should be secondary. Your primary, primary, goal is to make your letter be understood okay use the few words in sentences and few lines in paragraphs to greatly consider the readability of the message check for electrical features of your sentence and paragraphs and see to it that it is written with correct grammar so according to barrett so he reported that his study that lexical and syntactic features contribute to the complexity of reading comprehension correct grammar can can affect reading comprehension because I don't. If based on your experiences, if you are, if the grammar is wrong somehow, it could lead to misunderstanding of, on the letter. However, if I doubt that not all short sentences and short paragraphs are readable and comprehensible, so make make it a point that uh, if it's short and simple, see to it that everything is uh, that you have you have expressed it. Uh, properly and comprehensively. The familiarity and unfamiliarity of words in the linguistic system of, of a reader is it because of the data signal? 
Next, avoid ambiguous expressions. We use action words instead of uh, action specific words. So also include relative pronouns, that, which, who, for clarifying or in, uh, introducing clauses. Do not use contradictions, don't, can't, and weren't. Be, uh, try more on the positive writing. So if, if you want to say something that's negative, try to translate it on the positive side. Instead of saying we do not, onion, we wish to, if, you are, if it's a request, um, if you do not agree on what, uh, if you do not agree on what on what stipulated above, it's already negative. Yes. If you agree on. But stipulated above, please sign the conforme, conforme below, something like that. Make it positive. Action specific. Uh, use action words. Avoid the use of the is and the are because it's just linking. So be specific with words. Say, for example, uh, Say, for example, permission. Yeah, permission. If permitted, if permitted, there's already action. So instead of saying, um, your permission is, is, yes. So somehow, your, your, it's not action specific. It means it's just linking, linking your or not or somehow on a subtle way. dictate parang hindi mo hindi mo siya Parang sinasabi mo lang na na and your permission is appreciated, but it's different when you say if permitted. Meaning to say, you're projecting that somehow you, uh, on a subtle way, you should permit. Yung isa kasi in option mo pa eh. Yung isa, somehow, may chance, mas malaki yung also in option pa, mas malaki yung chance na ma-permit. Kasi yung isa, parang 50-50, your permission is mostly appreciated. Meanwhile, yung isa, if permitted, meaning to say, mangyayari na. Hindi yung binibigyan mo pa siya ng option. Ah, pwede pa pala akong magano. Mag hindi ma-permit. Eh, yung isa. Parang, somehow, sa, sa scale ng 1 to 10, may 6 ka na dun sa isa. Yung isa, parang nasa 5.5 pala or 4.5 pala. Ganon. Stay away from the following idioms and cliches. You don't need to do this. You, stay, you say, stay to the point. So, stop a so for idioms and figurative cliches, so with the, with the clock, you just want to say before the deadline. So you say, uh, please submit everything before the deadline. Do not beat the clock. Somehow it's still, some cultures may not understand that. So if, if it's just general, beat the clock, will be understood. Do the dirty work or do the disagreeable, the illegal, dishonest thing. So avoid also or straight to the point. Slam words, don't use this. Gonna use going to. Wanna, I want to. Okay, all right. So do not use that. Also, this and replying on formal le on formal setting because some formal multicultural setting because some cultures may not understand what of what may not or if the generation of that of the reader is not that adept with this shortcut, somehow you will you would get they would get lost. Give a message, lam, IMO, and from my AKA, also known as a rule of methodology. And abbreviation. So, because we're writing, somehow we are using this. So avoid that. You complete every word that there is. Also, jargon. If you're professional, so say, for example, in BBMs in the future, and you are writing with general public or announcing something that would matter for general public or international, uh, international purposes. So do not use your medical jargon because 
unless the international purposes is for also for deviants all over the world. But if it's for common people, use the simplest word possible for them to understand. Again, you're writing because you want to understand and not to impress. Okay, next. Strive for clarity. We've always been discussing this, that you, your aim is to, to, to send a clear message and not to uh, make things worse. Okay. Next is use correct grammar. So re any written document should be grammatically correct. Accuracy in writing guarantees the writer uh, to, be, to be accurate in writing. One should always be guided by the basic classic plan, basic rules of English language. I think most uh, in all profession and all across the profession, what everyone should be equipped, be somehow knowledgeable with the English, basic English language, basic English rules. So you will be using that if you uh, professionally. Somehow those who are striving to use or to use English language in written and in written form, they are, they are struggling to express themselves through letters. Lagi silang naghahanap ng, ng, gagawa, ng gagawa. But if you know how to write your own letters or your own communication, you know how to express well uh, what you truly want to say. Kasi pag pinasulat mo lang sa iba, hindi nila ma-express kung ano yung gusto mo sabihin. But if, you, if others can, if you alone can use or can construct the cons the letter somehow you are quite you are sure that you will be able to you'll be able to convey your message so this one technical cite numbers carefully so numbers should be written following metric set, set, uh, following the metric system spell out numbers one to nine so one to nine is spelled out so figures and write figures if it's 10 and above. So one to nine spelled out, letters. 10 and above, it is numerical, okay? Always convert dollars, dollar figure into the local currency. So that uh, you would not, uh, um, you would not bother see or computing what's the, what's the accurate amount, but it's already on the local currency. Avoid using figures to express states. For example, this one shouldn't be written as this one. It should be written as February 14, 2020. It should be spaced there, sorry. Typo. Next, guidelines on data on date format must be observed. So sometimes, so in the European countries, they, they or in the Americas, they write the let or they write the dates number first the date the day first the date and then the month and then the year so in, here in asia it's the month first the date and then the year next accommodate the reader in heart and organization organization tone and style so so organization organize your message observing appropriate tone and style to appeal to your audience so if it's for general public somehow it should still be respectful and professional sounding because you are expressing in such a way that uh, you've written it some uh, it was written by a professional and not just a tambay in the canto okay next so you should Always, so you should uh, you should observe and <clears throat> writings that is professional, sounding clear and understandable. Style is the way which your document is written, which influences the reader's impression of the information itself. So there, funny yung style. There are some written out, or there are some letters that when you read it you will feel that the that the, that the writer is angry or furious so in that way you should uh, somehow parang, uh, because it's written that way 
gusto kagad ng action na galit na galit na sila but then for for general public to see that you would they would have an impression that it was unprofessionally written but if it's if the style of the of of, of the writing is asking or pleading for an appeal of something or wants action but it's professionally done kalmado maganda yung pagkakasulat at hindi nakakabastos on on anyone then and you, people would see that it is professionally and respectfully written kahit medyo gusto mo nang mabilis ang action next the overall tone and the attitude of the piece of writing should be appropriate to the audience and the purpose okay ano na to? Varieties of English. Kaya pa? Proceed pa tayo? Okay. Sige, introan lang natin to. <clears throat> Parang kasakto tayong one hour. Varieties of English. So before, akala lang natin there just one English. That's the English, the American English. No. In the world now, we can, um, we can, we can, we can now say that there are several Englishes in the world. World English, so it's the British English, the American English, Australian English, Philippine English, Singaporean English, oh, and Black English and New Zealand English. Yon. So I think there are seven Englishes in the world. So, so have, because of these considerations, there already there there was an addition of many English words and accepted uh, accepted words in the English dictionary. So with British English, it is it came from uh, came from the United Kingdom. British of the Isles. Ito yung mga British accent. Sila yung nawawala ng R. But there are words, not about the pronunciation, but the words that they convey. So American English is, uh, so obviously, it's the English of the USA, Canada, and other parts of the United States. So English has given uh, official status by 32 out of 50 states in um, government. But English in our... Um, <coughs> Uh, but fun, the funny thing is, English is a widely spoken spoken language in the United States and it's common language used by federal government. But they consider this as de facto English, or de facto language, or they do not really consider English as their national English, or that national language. It's just, um, we, uh, it's just odd to know that, that they do not see English as their national language. Because somehow they have different dialects of, also with on how they speak particular English uh, for, for a particular particular English bargain on their on the on the states of of, of U, different states in US. So it's an example. What I'm trying to say is the words. Diba? So in British English and American English comparison. So yung counter, counter, and tao nila don counterclockwise so clockwise and counterclockwise counter is anti-clockwise starter is appetizer sa kanila yung sa british pala na sa british nagsimula yung salitang appetizer pero para sa atin it's just the same so, sa kanila starter yun eggplant is sa katawag nila ay aubergine and you in the americas it's cookie in british it's biscuit trunk it's boot. Suspenders, braces. I think this is the suspender that's worn in your clothes. You can clip sa pantalon. Para ma, para hindi gumalaw, para hindi magalaw yung ano, yung, yung po, yung long sleeves, parang ganon. Then braces ang tawag nila. Dito yung braces ng nasa mika na, just to say. Cotton candy is candy floss. Parking lot is car park. Drugstore is chemist. French fries is chips. Creed is caught. Zucchini is courgette. Crisp chips is crisp. 
chips yung chichiria at crisp sa kanila. Thumbtox is growing pen. Yung thumbtox, yung flat yung ulo na metal, matulis. Robe is dressing gown, dressing gown. Pacifier is dummy. Garbage bin is dustbin. Washcloth is flannel. Basahan, washcloth. Tama, basahan ba ito or basa tela? Apartment is flat. Soccer is football. Banks is French broilers. Broilers. Grill. So we'll... Taga, posin natin ito. Broiler is grill. Grill also. Barrett is hair slide. Vacation is holiday. Sweater is... Even weekend. Did they... Um, some British people call your weekend as holiday. Sweater is jumper. Elevator is lift. Cell phone is mobile phone. Pero para sa atin, isa lang to, no? Pero sa kanila, magkaiba yan. License plate is plate. Number plate. Sa atin, plate number. Liquor. Liquor store is uh, off license. Oven meat is oven gloves. Gloves. Part is parting. Sideways is sidewalk is pavement. Gas or gasoline is petrol. Mailbox is postbox. Zip code, postcode. Private school, public school. Stroller is pushchair. Shopping cart is shopping trolley. Jump uh, rope is skipping rope. Sled is sledge. Public school is state school. There. So we continue the Australian English next meeting. Questions? So far. Yan, kailangan ko tuloy yung... Wala, sige. Gano'n pa bang nadagdag dito? Magpipicture tuloy ako ulit. O okay lang kahit... Ano ba itong music? Okay, ika lang. Let's take a picture. Okay, stop share ko lang. Okay. Okay, if you don't have questions, I guess see you next meeting. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Okay. Thank you, ma'am.